Hey, Shared Extraordinary Conference. Welcome back to day two. I don't know about you guys, but I am learning so much. This has been such an incredible couple of days and it's only getting started. Right now I'm joined by educator and speaker, Shelly Corbett. Shelly, how are you, my friend? I am doing awesome, Michael. Thanks so much for having me. I'm having so much fun. Yeah, me too. And you know, so much of photography should be about fun and the adventure and the joy of it. Tell us quickly, if we don't know about you, a little bit about your journey into Lens Baby. I'm a toy photographer and I have discovered over the last eight years of this fun and crazy adventure that I've been on that Lens Baby is the perfect lens for toy photography. That's amazing. And I know in your course coming up, we're going to learn a bit about that. Can you tell us a little bit about what to expect? Well, um, I kind of take you on a journey of what I what I do and how I do it and the process of taking toys and how Lens Baby really helps to capture your stories. And then I take you out in the field and I show you how I do it. And my goal is to inspire you to get your toys out, steal them from your children, go out and buy whatever you want. Uh, re -in uh, investigate your childhood and take your lens baby and take your toys and go out and have awesome adventures because it's a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I am super excited about this. I kind of want to go break out the Batman and my sweet 50 right now. Yes. Um, I don't know about you guys shoot extraordinary, but this one is going to be amazing. Make sure you stick around with Shelly and I for the Q&A after. And my friends, we will see you in the classroom. Hi, welcome to the magical world of toy photography. I want to say thank you to Craig and Michael for allowing me to tell my story and introduce you to the fabulous world of toy photography. So what is toy photography? It is a combination of fan fiction, product photography, and macro photography, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. So besides fan fiction and product photography, what is really cool about toy photography is it is a storytelling medium. So depending, it doesn't matter what toys you use, if you're using Lego or if you're using action figures or if you're using like matchbox cars or anything like that, you can tell a story with that. And I don't know what that story is. That's for you to decide as the artist, is that gonna be a story based on someone else's intellectual property like a Star Wars recreating of a scene or are you gonna tell a story from your own childhood? Or are you gonna tell a story that's just you totally made up? But that's the beauty of toys is they're flexible, they're great models. You can practice your portrait photography, you can stage them however you want, they'll do whatever you want and you can practice and just have fun. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am a art photographer. I live in Seattle, Washington. I've been photographing for 30 plus years and I've been a toy photographer since 2012. And I was introduced to the Lens Baby lenses around 2014. Let's see, I kind of got sucked into the toy photography world through my family's love of Lego. And uh, I was given a gift of some collectible minifigures for Christmas one year and one thing led to another and I'm posting on Instagram and I just got really enthralled with the community which is super supportive and super fun. And I wanted to share with you my very first toy photo which let's just say it leaves a lot to be desired. There's a lot of room for growth in that photo, but I thought it would be amusing to share that with you as well as some of my favorite toy photos from the last year or so. So when I first started taking toy photos, I started out with my, my phone. 
Um, like I said, I've been a, toy, a photographer, an art photographer for quite a long time, but I went through what might be called my dark ages. That's a term, a Lego term, but in my 40s, I just kind of like put it all aside. I didn't make the transition from film to digital very well. I was not happy with going to a digital format. I liked the unpredictable nature of film and the happy accident, and I didn't feel I could get that with digital. So I put that all aside for a while, and like I said, I got some, some Lego figs for Christmas, and I thought it would be sort of fun to take some photos. I started with my phone, started on Instagram, and it didn't take long before I could not get the images that I wanted with my phone. So I picked up my Canon, I got myself a macro lens and went to town. I had a great time, but even then I couldn't get the photos that I had in my head out. So I went to my local camera store and I said, what do you got? So I was looking for a Diana style camera lens, maybe a plastic lens, something kind of funky. And they sent me down, they said, well, why don't you try a lens baby? So I did. And it took me a while to get the hang of it. There's a little bit of a learning curve with the lens baby. You may have noticed that. I have to say the effort has been worth it. So one of the joys of toy photography, besides being an excuse to take toy photos is there's a worldwide toy photography community that sort of sprang up out of this Instagram, Facebook, online world where we, people with like-minded interests, people who like photographs and toys sort of found each other. And everyone comes to the community the first time and goes, I thought I was the only one. Well, it turns out there's a whole mess of us out there. So as I mentioned previously, I was introduced to Lens Baby around 2014, 2015, and I got a original composer, I think one, with some double glass, which was definitely uh, kind of a, a slow start. And I just, I, get it, I kind of got afraid of Lens Baby. It's like, cause it's such a distinct look that people were like, oh, you can't use that all the time because then your work is gonna just look like that and so I only just used it sparingly but as I got farther into this crazy world and I discovered all the different lenses from the twist 60 to a sweet 50 and a sweet 35 or whatever I got I treat them like brushes each one is a little bit different each one is going to give my images a different look and through that exploration of these different lenses now I just realize my lenses are like brushes. I can't tell you the difference between an edge and a sweet and what that effect is gonna be. And honestly, I really don't care. What I care about is what am I gonna get in that final image? And when I see what's in the camera, when I see what I want, it makes me so happy. And I just am grateful that there's such a variety in these lenses that I always take at least three or four in the field with me and I play around and if I don't see what's in the camera with one lens, I just swap it out and stick a different one in and see what I get. And it's that, that sense of mystery and surprise and exploration that has basically made me fall in love with these lenses. One thing that I absolutely adore about these lenses is their ability to take the ordinary and make them extraordinary. So I thought I would share a few photos that show behind the scenes and then the images that I took that my camera saw and how you can, th these lenses can turn a, a muddy puddle into a magical fairyland or a winter snowstorm into a, the planet Hoth. It captures the magic that is photography where you can take a three-dimensional environment and turn it into a two-dimensional realization of a little bit of magic. So one of the fun things about these crazy line of lenses that I've discovered is it has, they create the most amazing lens flare. And much like J.J. Abrams, I've, there's never been a lens flare that I've seen that I haven't loved. So the opportunity to bring that element into my photography and use it as a, way to draw attention to the figure or to highlight what's going on, create leading lines by bringing that lens flare in as an actual element into the photo, to me just adds another layer of magic and, and 
allowing the, the viewer to step out of their ordinary lives and into this crazy magical world that I'm creating with my toys. Part of being a toy photographer is selling the idea that the toys are alive. And I can't do that if the toys are just lifelessly sitting there. Then they're just lumps of plastic and, you know, then you're just a product photographer. And that's not what I like to do. I want to bring my toys alive. Now to do that, I need to give us at least give a hint at motion or allude to motion. And I got to tell you, the Sweet 35 and the Sweet 50 are my secret weapons when it comes to bringing motion into my photos. Because when you crank your composer off to a pretty crazy ass angle, you get this amazing blur off to the sides. And it just gives a sense of motion in camera as opposed to adding it in post with Photoshop. And I'm kind of a little stickler, a little weirdo when it comes to wanting to do all my effects in camera. I guess that's sort of a hangover from being learning how to take photographs with film. So I like to actually create the image that I want in camera. So using the sweets, that line, um, I can bring a sense of motion, a sense of speed, a sense of craziness, and, and the water has a sense of movement to it, and it makes it feel as if these, these little crazy toys are going on an adventure where there's movement involved. Sell the idea that the toys are alive and that they're doing crazy things. I want them to jump and fly and speed along on their bikes. But obviously they're not gonna do that on their own. So I have, to I have developed, with the help of my community, with trading tricks back and forth, all sorts of different ways to support the figures in positions that make them look like they're actually in motion. And that can be with a heavy gauge wire, or with Lego, I'm using some plastic bricks and some rods that will support the figures in positions that are action, more action-oriented. And part, for me, <laughs> makes my life easy is when those supports disappear or are minimized. And there's so much craziness going on with those lens, baby lenses that, and the, that beautiful swirly book in the background that those supports can are easier to deal with in post. So I wanted to show you a series of images that are before and after so you can see how that wire or those plastic supports can disappear. And if you're not that great with Photoshop, I'm not that great with it, that you can sort of like blend and fudge, fudge the reality. And really, again, sell that idea that the toys are floating, that they're racing along on their bikes, and whatever, you, whatever crazy idea you have in your mind. Okay, I, I'm going to confess. Um, I'm, I might be a toy photographer, but really it is simply an excuse to get outside and go enjoy nature. There's nothing more fun than packing up the toys, having a few scenes in your, in your head and in the backpack that you wanna capture and going out to either a local park or out into the mountains or even if you're in a city, going on a walking tour and just seeing what you can see because once you start putting the toys on the ground and you get down on the, their level, you see the world through a different set of eyes and it's, I love that transformation. And again, it's about making the ordinary into something extraordinary. So for me, what I do is I take the toys and they go on adventures with me, both around the city and up in the mountains. And if I can't get out in the mountains and go have a hike with the kids, I'm going to take them to the local park. And there's a lot of joy of just being outside and experiencing the world through photography, through the lens of toys. Before I was a toy photographer, I was an underwater photographer. And for some reason, water is a continuing theme in my work. And I don't know if it's just the feel of water, the look of water, the magic of water, reflections in water. I don't know what the attraction is. I don't really give a lot of thought to it, but you will see water as a continuing theme in my work. 
and there's lots of different ways I will achieve that look and that could be a rushing stream, it could be a frozen cookie sheet on my uh, porch or my favorite is puddles and I learned that trick from my friend in Sweden who showed me that you can do some amazing work in puddles. So I'm always on the lookout for a really good puddle and I always have at least one boat in my arsenal with a little toy theme going on. And in my local park, which isn't very far from my house, I actually have a favorite puddle. And I know that seems very silly because it is a one ugly, muddy mess of a puddle, but I have taken so many fun and fabulous photos there and I wanted to show a few of those to you. So over the years, one of the ideas that I've sort of embraced is the idea of wabi-sabi. And if you don't know what that is, it is a Japanese term where basically translated into embracing imperfection. There's beauty and imperfection. And I think that is what attracts me to this line of lenses so much is that they're not, a, you're not gonna get a perfect photo. If you wanna get a perfect photo, you know, there's other lenses out there that will give that to you. But what Lens Baby will do is it will help you create images that in their imperfection are incredibly beautiful. And part of being a fan of this line of lenses is you gotta embrace that. And I really love that aesthetic of beauty through imperfection. So what's next for me? I mean, I've had a really good run with Lens Baby, and I imagine I'm going to keep going in the future, especially there's always something new on the horizon. I've certainly enjoyed these new Omni filters. Those have been a lot of fun, so thank you guys for creating those. And how I use those is maybe not necessarily on my actual Lens Baby lenses, but on my 90mm Sony macro lens. It's a way for me to take that lens, which honestly I do love, and give it a little bit of a flare. So I wanted to share a few of those images with you. And so you can kind of see how I'm incorporating that whole aesthetic into this scene differently, creating a sense of magic around those toys. Again, having, feel, ha helping the viewer feel like they're stepping into a different universe. So that's a whole nother way for me to explore toy photography. And I love the challenge of it. I also have my eye on a couple new lenses, but my theory and my experience has been master one lens before I move to another one because each one of them has their own little quirks, their own crazy aspects and flavor to them. And I want to master that particular lens brush slash toy before I move on to the next one. So I have my eye on something. I'm hoping maybe Christmas would be good. But uh, in, in the meantime, I'm gonna keep playing with my Omni filters and just see what crazy new lenses these guys come up with down the road that I'm gonna enjoy adding to my collection. So another secret, super fun thing to do with your toys and your photography is to travel with them. And so what I always do is whenever I'm going on a family trip, or uh, a day trip, could be a vacation, I always pack my toys and Honestly, I pack my toys first when I'm getting ready to go on a trip. Pack my toys, then the camera gear, and then if there's any room left, I'll throw some clothes in. That's pretty much the, the, the drill. I have traveled with my toys to um, all sorts of places in the US, Hawaii, a few foreign countries, and last year I had the privilege of going all the way to Melbourne, Australia to meet up with a bunch of toy photographer friends and spend an absolutely glorious day walking around Melbourne taking toy photos. And it's really a great way to give an extra different spin to your travel photography is seeing the world through the eyes of your toys. It's just a heck of a lot of fun. So if you are into traveling and wanna meet up with toy photographers, I can certainly put you in touch with a whole mess of them. We're online and you can connect with us through toyphotographers.com. We have a new hashtag, which is Lens Baby Toy Photography Club. So use that, go find us on, online on Instagram. And we've got a, a small but growing group of toy photographers who love exploring the world and the world of Lens Baby through toys. 
Well, this has been a lot of fun and I really appreciate the fact that you have hung in this far and let me talk to you about my photography process. The photography is not a noun, it's a verb and it's a heck of a lot of fun. So now I wanna take you on an adventure, you and my toys, and we're gonna go out in the field and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do and how I create my toy photography magic. So let's go. Okay, so when I go out into the field, I always pack a few toys with me. So today I brought a little series that I'm working on. Um, as you can see, it involves a lot of pigs. And uh, so let's get started. Uh, my inspiration tends to come from children's stories. Uh, and this one is kind of a, a play on the children's classic, This Little Pig Went to Market. And This Little Piggy went home this little piggy had roast beef this little piggy had none that's my that's kind of my thought so i thought i would just take you through some of what it takes to go into some toy photography so besides my toys i always bring my trusty sony and i always travel with at least four lens baby lenses i have my uh Sweet on my composer, I have a Sweet 35, I bring a Sweet 50, an Edge 50, and my Twist 60, and somewhere in there I'll find the sweet spot for this little setup. I'm using a Sony A7 camera. Um, I like it because it's lightweight and it has um, uh, focus peaking, which is kind of important for me because my eyes are going. So this is a pretty easy setup. So I thought I'm gonna probably start with a twist 60 on this one because I like the background and I'm gonna see if I can get a nice swirly bouquet. And the reason I travel with so many lenses, um, as a, um, the reason I'm really attracted to the Lens Baby line is I like to, I think of my lenses like, like paint brushes and each one has its own feel to it. And so when I'm taking a photograph, I'm taking advantage of that different look, which each of the lenses will bring to the final image. I know a lot of people really feel that uh, focus sometimes matters or where where the focus is can can be different, can doesn't really matter. I'm really a stickler for focus, certain kinds of focus. So I like focus peaking because it makes sure I can get my little my little faces are in focus. Now you can see that there's a, a plastic she's sitting to keep her up off the ground. And what I'll probably do is in post, I'll make that go away. Not sure I like that lens, that grass. I'm not really sure I like this location. I might have to go and try her somewhere else, which is pretty typical of just a lot of trial and error when I'm taking toy photos. So what I what I really like when I'm taking photos is I like to be surprised and sometimes I'm surprised in the field and sometimes I'm surprised when I get home and see what I captured. But there's always, I really appreciate the lens baby, the variety of lenses and the lens flare and crazy effects and sweet spots and slices of focus. And it really brings out the magic in photography for me. And just when I see something in three dimensions and when I, and I take the photo, sometimes you get home and you're like, wow, that's really amazing. And I chuck it up to the lenses on that one. Oh, come on, she looks so cute. All right, so that is actually was a sweet 50 is what came through for me on that one. Who knew? Who knew? Right? All right. Where to next? Next. 
I just want to introduce you to my favorite puddle. I know most people probably have like a favorite rock or a favorite room or a flower, <laughs> a favorite toy. I have a favorite puddle. Now, I've always worked around water, and even with my toys, we tend to gravitate towards water. So I was going to show you how I take advantage of water, both frozen and moving. And let's take a photo of the little piggy went to market. So let's go. All right. She's looking good. She's looking really good. I've been carrying this setup around all summer. I never had a chance to do it, so I'm super excited to finally get the chance to do Little Piggy in her boat. she's down. They, they're always, I've, I have learned from many years of doing this, always make sure I have a towel with me because boy, do they always get wet. Now notice I have a, a little bounce card here to because I'm shooting into the sun and I want to make sure that she doesn't have any shadows on her face. And I've got my Sweet 50 on again and I got to tell you the lens flare is amazing. Which is another reason I love my lens baby. <laughs> okay, we've got a new lens. And the sparkles are amazing. Oh man. And this is why I shoot photograph toys in water with a lens baby. Okay, so now I gotta really sell the photo though. Okay, so right now, to sell the idea of movement and the toys moving, I like to get the water going, get a little movement in the water. So I have set my ISO to 50 so I can take advantage of as much as I can the water movement. Now I'm just working on focus because well, this is the part that I struggle with the most at these close-ups. I'm totally not getting my focus at all. All right. Nailed it. I'm really happy with that. It's got Trademark, lens baby, bokeh. It's got a lovely little lens flare. She's in focus. Not sure about the cat, but I'll have to figure that out. I'm going to get home. So as you can see, I am on the ground. I am, I am down low. And I have found over the years that the lower I get, the high, and if I can shoot up on my figures uh, and play with scale, both the surroundings and making the figures feel like they're monumental, I can sell the idea that the toys are alive much better. So that's a lot of what I'm doing is getting down on their level, seeing the world at, from their point of view, 
making them scale up a little bit by shooting with my lens up. So that's kind of see. And also, if you can really see, I really, I really jank my little um, composer around. Really, I want to get as much blur on those edges as I can to sell the feeling of motion. So, little piggy went to market. Very successful. Happy with that. It's really weird to be a person of my age and say that I'm a I'm a toy photographer. It's a it's a it's just a it's a little embarrassing. But I have learned to embrace it because toy photography makes me happy. Playing with toys is a joyful thing to do. Telling my own stories with my toys, telling other people's stories, telling their stories. I swear, sometimes those little toys are alive and they're telling me like the piggies. They're like like let's go on an adventure so we do and I've got some other silly setups and it just it's so much fun so yeah it brought the joy it helped me connect back to my childhood maybe a childhood I never had because I think a lot of this idea of this ideal childhood is just a a social construct but when you play with your toys as an adult it's an opportunity to create the childhood you always wanted but in your adult so it's much more empowering so yeah I love playing with toys that make me happy uh and then I it's but it's hard to be creative in this world especially now in the middle of a pandemic it's very hard to be creative and to keep that creative spark alive so I do my best to carve out that space and put myself first and I read somewhere um about creating your bliss your like a, a, a just a creative space, either it can be a space in your mind or a space, a physical space that you defend with, uh, with your life to make sure that you have that, that space for yourself. Because what it's saying is that saying you're important. So creativity is important. And, and especially now when the stresses and are just so great on all of us to have a little bit that you save back for yourself and feed your soul through creativity. <laughs> I'm going to make this work. So I have a lot of little tricks up my sleeve to get my little figures to stand up. And this is using some Lego product, which is a two by one long no, bar, trans clear, they all have crazy names. Um, uh, and then a little tack underneath here and it's attached there. And then I can get her doing a wheelie. I'm not sure if I've got the right angle because I kind of wanted to shoot that way. So it's behind me. So we'll see if we can get this to work. Not quite ideal, but so since I don't want such a wide shot, I'm going to, I'm going to go in a little bit and go in with my use a sweet 50 instead. And I have a macro attachment on this, the converter, the eight millimeter converter on this one. We'll see what happens. Mm, I really like the light. That's the thing about macro photography. You just never know what you're gonna get until you actually sit down and see what the light is. So pretty happy with that. Nice blur with the Sweet 50, gives a sense of motion. And then what I'll do is I'll just take the 
the um, that little plastic bar out in post. And then it'll, it will make it seem like she's zipping home super fast. I'm going to get in your way. Another great reason to take up toy photography is it's an excuse to just get outside. Go out, take a walk in nature, find a sunny spot, find a little bit of moss, get out your lens baby, get out your camera, get out your toys, set them up to see what happens. Sometimes sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but when it does, it's magic and that's that's what it's all about. This is our, this little piggy stayed home because she has her, her little carrots and she's going to go farming. I'm not sure if I'm going to find that shot here, but I'm going to try. And then this little piggy had roast beef, or in this case, venison, but no. We make do with what we have. All right. We're on the hunt. We're on the hunt for a new location. Photography is a lot of fun, but let's get real. It's really all about light. What is the light doing? And that's why we all go out and shoot at the golden hour, which is early in the morning or late at night, or diffused light or low light. And I tend to look for golden light, dappled shade, backlit uh, it's a beautiful autumn day out here today, and I've been shooting mostly looking directly into the sun, which unfortunately when I do that, it puts my toys in shadow, and that's why I use my handy-dandy bounce card, which will bring the light onto my figure and it really limit, limits my, my post-production work. But I'm always looking for a warm light. I'm looking for um, just little bits of, of dappled, like I say, dappled sunlight, and when you're shooting outside, that light's changing fast, and so I move really quickly. And, and that's just experience to make sure you capture the light because give 15 minutes and it's going to be something completely different. But that's what I'm always looking for when I'm out here in the field is what's a, what's a good light and where is the light on the horizon? I tried to take this photo earlier and it didn't work. And that's, that's, that's okay. That's, that's how it goes. You try to think, I gotta try things, just gotta try them. So, but I got this better location, love the moss, and, but the moss gives me two things. One gives me a little more, more texture and interest in the photo, but it also disguises what she's sitting on and then it'll make her help, make her look like she's floating a little bit more and it will, um, the moss will disguise the the little plastic bit, and then I'll have less work in post, which I kind of like to think I'm a little bit of a lazy photographer. And I like to do as little as possible in post-production. Now, I just why I can't get this to focus. We may be going to an edge on this. I can, I can, uh, I can photograph something three, four times before I get it. Sometimes it'll 250 photos. Sometimes I don't know. It takes forever. Sometimes it doesn't take much. That one was a, that one worked, worked out really well. I got lucky. I got lucky. All hey, right. What's in my pocket? What's in my pocket?
I got a piggy and a bear. And my keys. Let's see, what are we going to do? Piggy? I like this log a lot, but I do not like this branch. I only have, I have, um, I have a few toys that I shoot over and over again. Um, and they, they do and become a bit like family. And one of them never had a name. She was a sparkle fairy unicorn princess. But recently I did a whole photo shoot with her for a customer and we named her Ella together and she will always be Ella from now on. But these little guys, man, I love that lens flare. Ah, just absolutely love that. Let's see. Not sure about the focus or my depth of feel, but loving a lens flare. this little piggy series, I noticed that I was, I made them all girls. They're all female. I'm like, huh, wonder how that happened. I think right now for me and my toys, um, I'm trying to bring more female positive imagery into the work. And my spacemen often these days tend to be more of the female variety just looking for a little bit better representation, which is just changing. How, I guess that reflects my change in viewpoint of the world. When I first started with Lego, uh, there was very few girls represented female figures and all across the line. That's really changed in the last three or four years. And I think I like to think that's because there's been a lot of rabble rousing on the part of the fans asking them to do that. So We do have stories to tell. They're just maybe not the ones people are thinking we're telling. I'm really happy how this one came out. Nothing like a good bit of moss. It's just really hard to walk away from it. One of the reasons I like to come outdoors and photograph is I like to hear the sounds of nature. And I know that right now it's more like sound of airplanes and people in the park. But when I'm uh, up in the woods and I'm photographing next to a stream, it's just so relaxing. I think that's one of the reasons I'm attracted to photographing around water, just the sound. So getting out is very peaceful. So Photograph in my hand, toys in my backpack, out in nature. I don't know, life doesn't get any better than that. Coming out here with a series in my head and actually getting the photos, life is, it's been a very good day. Very, very good day indeed. So yeah, taking a photo, satisfying one's vision, and there's really a sense of accomplishment to that.
dreamy, artistic images. Emotive and soulful imagery. That extra dimension and quirkiness. Really unique images. Extraordinary results. Creamy bokeh and a dreamy feel. Creative and quirky landscapes. Unique blurry effects. Fun flares. Poetic, onetic look. Something extraordinary.